I saw on social media that as Moby was walking back into the tunnel yesterday, someone threw a bag of Revels and, and, <laughs> and, and, and it landed just on the floor by his foot and he picked it up and cheered. Yeah. And that. So I think he was in a good mood after yeah. the game as yeah. well. So welcome back to Small Eath Alliance FC. And yesterday, Birmingham City beat Sunderland 2-1 at St Andrews. In this video, we're going to review the match, give our points of view on what we thought about it. So that's why I'm going to go straight over to Matt and say to Matt, what did you think of the match? So before we get into the specifics of the actual game, I mean, let's talk about the atmosphere and the actual crowd and, and the support that we had yesterday. It was absolutely incredible, wasn't it? Oh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It's so nice to be at a sell at St Andrews. Yeah. It's uh, amazing. And Tom Wagner did, did pulled all the stops for us. You know, he allowed us to do discounted tickets. He sold the Upper Gill Merrick to the academies and the schools. You know, he pulled out all the stops. And I think as fans, we returned that favour and delivered. And I hope the feedback goes back to Tom Wagner and how much that meant to the Blues fans, what a special day yesterday was. And for me, I'm still bullied. In. Well, we, we, yeah. we was in the stadium really early and, yeah. uh, you know, even early on, you could still feel the build up and the anticipation yeah. and even going to the ground, you know, there was a buzz about it on social media before the game. Yeah. Everyone was saying looking forward to getting there and I think it delivered in terms of atmosphere. Yeah. It was incredible. And even before the game started, me and you were in there about an hour, an hour and 15 before mm -hmm. and we could barely hear each other talking just off. 27,000 people talking and we've never we've not had that for ages have no, we the atmosphere no. was just absolutely incredible and mm. to hear that keep right on when the players came out with a full capacity I've still oh. got goosebumps now thinking oh, it's just, <laughs> it's just, absolutely, put, put chills like, down your spine it was that, amazing it was yeah, absolutely yeah. brilliant wasn't it yeah. and as I said I hope that feedback gets back to Tom Wagner about what a special I'm day sure that it will. was I'm oh, sure it will, it will. Yeah. Um, but just talking about the actual performance the game Blues v Sunderland I thought a couple of words come to mind gutsy grafty determined resilient it wasn't a show-stopping game or performances from both teams, but I think this is another credit to Mowbray. Under Eustace and Rooney, I don't think we looked like we were capable of grafting out results and grinding out results. And yesterday, don't get me wrong, we weren't going to win any goal of the month with those two goals. We weren't going to win any standout performances, but we grafted, we grinded. And at the end of the day, that score sheet says Birmingham City 2, Sunderland 1. Well, and one of the points I've uh, made from this game, what I highlighted, is that... Um, is that under you know the way that we played and the goal the way that we scored our goals uh, under Eustace would have been difficult because Eustace played counter attacking football. There was a lot of occasions where we did get the ball in the box, but we didn't have enough bodies in there. Yeah. Now we're playing on the front foot. You know, I, I, I think you agree. Like the guy, the goal against Blackburn, um, a little bit like pinball. You know, mm -hmm. the, but in order to play pinball, you've got to have the players in the box to be able to get the ball in. And yeah, yeah. they they weren't pretty goals, but who cares? Who cares? Absolutely. Who cares? <laughs> no, no. I mean, what what did we say against Blackburn? You see, it, it doesn't matter if it comes off a player's bum as long as it goes in the net and we get three points. Do, who do cares? you know what? After ninety minutes, I don't really care how those goals go. I mean, no. uh, Stan. Field missed the world. We did miss a world. It was a brilliant oh. save from Patterson in the first half. What a fantastic volley that yeah. was! What was uh, on the volley from about 20, 25 yards out? Just as, just outside brilliant. the pass, but, yeah. but the way he kept it down was brilliant. I mean, them type of goals are absolutely fantastic. When they go in, it, you know, I mean, yeah. literally, the, 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 the roof would have come off if there was oh, one on the stadium. Absolutely, but yeah. it, it didn't. It was a good save. But did, you know what? That type of goal counts exactly the same as a scuff or a deflection yeah, or uh, you know a scrambled goal. They all yeah, count yeah. the same. Uh, what did you think of the team selection, mate? It was the same. It was the same team that uh, that. Most Bray picked for the Blackburn game exactly the same starting line. Yeah, I think why change a winning formula? Yeah. Um, I think Dazal and Paik in the centre of the field. You know, they proved against Blackburn that they're front footed. They want to go forward. You know, Sunderland were a bit more compact than Blackburn, and that was proven in the goal that we conceded because against Blackburn, um, uh, Paik and Dazal was picking the channels they were going forward, where Sunderland pegged us back a little bit more. So we were doing a bit more backward passing. That's how the goal came about. Kind of, you know, Paik was that uh, that sidewards delivery to Roberts. I think Paik sold Roberts short for that, but also Roberts was on the yeah. back. Roberts was flat-footed. So yeah. I think there was a combination there. For me, M Roberts was way too static. He was he was flat-footed. He got caught. But, you know, um, you don't need to give Jack Clark a gift. He's already <laughs> well, a yeah, good well, player, but, 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 uh, I, but I looked it back, looked at the goal in the hollow. So when you're in the stadium, it's happening at real time. Yeah. Uh, and I was really unhappy with Roberts at the time. But actually, now I look back at it, when I looked at the highlights, you know, he was sold short. He I mean, you it. could argue that Roberts should have been more alert because if you know yeah. you've got a player like Jack Clark behind, you, yeah, you, yeah. you've got to be right on your game to, to stop that ball but it wasn't a great pass from Paik to be honest so yeah Robbo was was you know but, to blame for that in, yeah. in part but I think it should never be passed back to him like that no I mean it was it was a it was a poor pass but for me he should have been a lot more aware he shouldn't have been so flat-footed but you're right there was a combination of the two there for that goal and I think that was typical of the first half I mean one word for me which sums up the first half is sloppy yeah bad bad passing 
um, um, not much energy, you know, a lot of back and forth. And I just felt like the, the energy was missing. And we were just sloppy, bad bad passing. Yep. We were slow, uh, at times slow. But, you know, I was really impressed with that second half performance. That that showed to me that Mowbray has got a team now that can graft and can grind and can get us over. Yeah, I, th- I, think that, I think that's a good assessment of the first half, to be honest, yeah. Matt. I mean, I uh, was like all Blues fans. I'm hyped up because we've got a full attendance, you know, yeah. we've got great passion in the crowd. Uh, and then to concede the goal like that, it's like, it's like putting a pin in a balloon, you know, tsh- yeah. suddenly you know you think oh no my word please don't lose a game like that but the way that they came out in the second half and don't, but don't bear in mind though you know, I know that Sunderland fans and we'll talk about that in a minute about their team that what we thought but they weren't overly impressed with that performance no. uh, but they are still a good side and, you know and they've got players there I mean I thought they had a few good chances now we've got to get we've got to stop in my opinion we've got to stop those mistakes that was definitely a mistake yeah. for the goal but also not long after that I don't know if you remember in the first half the ball was lofted up uh, with Bielek I think it was Mundle one on one yeah and whereas Bielek shouldn't have let the ball bounce, he should have headed it. He mm. let the ball bounce and Mundell got in front of him, turned and actually Ruddy ended up having to make a good save to stop us going 2-0 yeah, down. Yeah. That yeah. is avoidable if you mm-hmm. make the right decision. So that type of thing is the in the Championship is a difference between winning and losing games and we have to cut that out. Absolutely. I think a lot of their chances were avoidable. If you look, if you look back and watch the game, we, yeah. we in the first half especially, we were... We were gifting them chances left, right and centre, to be perfectly honest. You know, sloppy, slow to the ball. But, you know, as I say, let's not t- dwell on that too much. You know, the second half, they came out. And I, I got a feeling Moby would have not given him a bollock in half time, but he definitely would have said, you know, uh, you know, where's the passion? Let's cut out these sloppy mistakes. And I think that's shown in the second half. They came out. They grafted, they grinded. It was a lot better. I mean, don't get me wrong. It wasn't a, a, a perfect performance, but it's not about a perfect performance. It's about getting the results. As it's like, particularly in the position we're in in the league. Absolutely. It's literally about grinding results. So, and I think what, why that result was even more important is the results that happened below us as well. I think it's going to be natural for Blues fans. You know, the way we have been over the last few seasons, we're going to always be looking over our shoulder. You know, we're always and at half time. Me and Matt were talking that results again were going against us, and that uh, we were losing at the time. Uh, but then suddenly we win and we've still got that six points buffer between us and yeah. uh, QPR a third from, from bottom and a game in hand as well. Yeah, so yeah. so if we focus on what we're going to do, it doesn't really matter what the other teams are going to do. Mm. And also as well, I thought that result was important as well because of the next couple of games we got as well. We've got Ipswich away, yeah. then Southampton at home and they're not going to be easy games. Yeah. But listen to Mowbray's um, post-match interview. He said, well, nothing to be frightened of. You know, yeah. they're just 11 players. You know, we, there's nothing for us to be frightened yeah. of. Let's plan the front foot and give them a go. Yeah. And that's what he's instilled in the team. And yeah. I think that, yeah. was, that was highlighted in the performance. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, I, feel like, I feel like under Mowbray, we can go and get a result anywhere. I really mean that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I feel like we're confident. I feel like the players are comfortable now. I feel like he's got the players firing. I, I genuinely feel like we can go to most places and at least give a good account of ourselves at the moment. And it's funny, you know, when... Um, when uh, John Eustace has had a 1.66 uh, percentage rate. And Tony Moby has a 1.66 percent rate. If that gap wasn't filled there without Rooney, apparently, if the results showed, we'd be fifth in the league. So the reason why I reference that is just to show that we are a good team. Yeah. Uh, we've just had a little bit of a blip this season. We are a good team. We've got some good players. We've now got an amazing manager behind us. And I think, as I say, bigger picture here, sorry, after, after the Sunderland game and we move into the um, next few games and into the preseason. I think next year, I think we're gonna really going to push on. And... and off the back of that, looking at Sunderland, no disrespect to Sunderland and the fans, uh, uh, that team didn't even hold a candle to the team that we saw down at St Andrews last yeah, year. Yeah, uh, They weren't yeah. even close. Yeah, they, I've made a note of that as well. Yeah, I mean, it's night and day, really. Uh, I mean, if you look at the stats for that match yeah, in the game uh, on Saturday, it was round about 50-50. I think they were 51%, we were 49 so it's pretty even. Yeah. Last season, I don't remember the exact percentage. This is when they beat us two one at St Andrews. Yeah, uh, we'd be. I'll be surprised if we had over thirty percent possession, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, they they were dominant against yeah. us on the front foot. And I think that shows uh, a combination of things. It shows our improvement, but it mm-hmm. also shows you know a little bit of the way they weren't as good as they were as well. Absolutely. Um, so so we've made strides, which is good. Um, but it was you know surprising, yeah. I suppose, how uh, Sunderland sort of didn't really do more in the second half. And I think that's re- at the moment reflected in their fan base and the noise that they made in the stadium to me the Sunderland fans they seemed like a deflated fan base you know normally yeah, Sunderland come yeah. and they bring the noise and credit to Sunderland fans when you do come to St Andrews normally it's rocking it's loud yeah, yeah. I mean they had moments when they scored they were quite loud for about 5 or 10 like, minutes like all teams when like they all scored teams, yeah, but generally yeah. speaking to me that Sunderland away uh, end seemed like a fan base which was deflated yeah. uh, and it seemed like they were supporting a team which clearly wasn't the strongest well, they, 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 they are deflated I mean if yeah. you look at the uh, comments on social media there's a lot of um, 
you know, negative comments about Beal and about the style of play. So, and it's understandable. We, are, you know, we feel for you. We, 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 if any team yeah. knows what it feels like to lose a game, it's going to be us. So we, we know we know what it's like to to make that feeling. But yeah. I just want to make uh, just one point as well. Again, on uh, and we made this point um, in our in our previous um, post match um, video against for, against Blackburn. It's Tyler yeah. Roberts. Yeah. I think that he's improving uh, game on game, and yeah, he, he does overplay the ball. You can see that. But he, he gets in good positions. He's, he's good on the ball. Mm. And actually, the equaliser, the result of him yeah, winning yeah. the ball, turning and shooting and, and resulting in a good save out of Patterson that eventually went over for Jordan James to equalise. So I think, um, yeah, Tyler Roberts, he's, he's still got a way to go. But I think if he can get a goal, yeah. I think that could ignite him. I completely agree. And I think he's almost there. He, his decision making in the final third is sometimes a bit poor as well. But I think that's down to a lack of match practice. I think that experience and when he gets more time on the ball and more minutes on on the field, those decisions he'll start to get right with a bit more match practice because yeah. he's been out for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I just want to quickly reference. I've made some notes of a couple of performances or, or, or notes. So Ethan Laird, I thought had a good game. I thought he, yeah. I thought Ethan Laird was pretty. Solid. I love, love Ethan Laird. He, yeah, I, I love his enthusiasm and the way he tries to get the crowd going as yeah, well. well we, we love that, Ethan. If you ever watch this video, just keep doing that, mate. Yeah. That, that that really we, we um, like that in the in the crowd yeah. to, to get see your passion that feeds on us as well. Yeah. And I saw a video on social media. He was the t he was the player this year that went into the cup. Uh, special seats at the end and did like a little speech and just said thank yeah. you for your support when the crowd get behind yeah. us we feel it we love it and it spurs us on so you can tell he has a connection with the crowd and yep. I think I think the St Andrews um, crowd and the Blues fans are starting to really enjoy and love Ethan Laird I think he's becoming a bit of a fan favourite um, Miyashi um, I think he was a little bit weak in the first half gave the ball away but however I think he did redeem himself in the second half he actually went on to become man of the match uh, believe it or not which which I thought was really interesting well, well I thought he was going to be subbed uh, only, only because you know he's, there's no doubt that he's a good player there's absolutely no doubt but I just yeah. I, I feel like he was getting pushed around the first half and when, when, when the substitutions were made I was absolutely amazed when I saw Bakuna and Dembele coming on I thought that one of the subs had to be Miyoshi, but you know, a very brave decision for Tony Mowbray yeah. to kick all three of them on. It shows why me and you aren't the Blues manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why. Yeah, we exactly. lost three 0 to Sunderland. Did me and yeah, you were in charge? So. Yeah. Um, I thought. I thought Woody made a couple of good stops again. Yeah, um, yeah. Again, I was going to mention Tyler Roberts, but you've done that for me again. Yeah. Solid performance. Yeah. And my final one is to Dizal. I think he didn't have an amazing game, and Pake didn't have an amazing game, but they did enough. And I think, like, we, even though they have poor games, we can still feel the difference on the transition. You know, when we're pushing from defence up yeah. to forward. Well, the, when the, we've the got Pagan yeah, Dizal in the team, yeah, yeah. we look way more confident doing that transition. The, dif the difference now with the transition is it's forward rather than exactly, backwards. Yeah. And, and that makes a massive difference. 100%. You yeah. know, we were actually now playing in the other opposition's half rather than uh, playing the ball between, yeah. you know, along our back line. So so I totally agree, yeah. Dizal. I, I think Dizal, for us, is going to be one of those players that, that has a real big impact on every game, but it's not going to shine out in every yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. And and they're they're the type of players that are a real key to a team. Absolutely. And just one final uh, one final thing for me, and that was I saw on social media that as Moby was walking back into the tunnel yesterday, someone threw a bag of Revels, and and, <laughs> and, and, and it landed just on the floor by his foot, and he picked it up and cheered. Yeah. And that. So I think he was in a good mood after the game as yeah. well. But for me, I think I think that's everything for me. I think it was a scrappy performance. First half was sloppy. We definitely turned it around in the second half. As I say, we're not going to win goal of the month for the last three goals that we've scored. But who cares? We're winning yeah. games. At the end of the day, it says Birmingham City 2, Sunderland 1, and Birmingham are currently sitting 15th. At the time of recording, we're sitting in 15th at the table, and at the moment, with Mowbray in charge, I feel like we can go anywhere and get a result. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was a re really good really good turnaround, and uh, you know, uh, and what could have been uh, a, a quite a, a difficult uh, situation if we hadn't won that game based upon our next fixtures. I think the, the players uh, you know, put the effort in, they turned it around, and they gave us a victory. So that's what we think about the game. I mean, it's, it's hard not to uh, carry that emotion from the Full packed out St Andrews at Knighthead Park. Um, as you go through through the week, you know a good result makes it all positive for us. Uh, you know I think we're in a position now as Birmingham City supporters where we can have faith in Tony Mowbray and the players that were remember pretty much the same players under Rooney and. John Eustace, who have appear to have turned a corner. I don't think we're going to have the season where we're not going to have any more defeats. Of course we will. But we can have confidence from that uh, victory uh, against Sunderland and move forward. And uh, we feel positive. But what do you feel? You know, as Blues fans, what do you think about the performance? Do you agree with what me and Matt have said? Uh, even Sunderland supporters, I'd love to hear from you in terms of what you think about your performance and your team and maybe what you think about Birmingham City. I don't think we played um, overly brilliantly, but we still got the three points. But um, let put your comments below uh, the video and let us know uh, what you think. And um, hopefully, if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any future content. And me and Matt will see you on the next video.